Matthew Perry's family and friends have come together to farewell the actor. The star's funeral was a small private affair in Los Angeles, with mourners told of a new foundation set up in his honour. Jennifer Aniston was the first to arrive, her grief mirroring the solemn faces of the friends cast at Matthew Perry's funeral, her presence a silent testament to the day's sorrow. Together with the rest of the Friends ensemble, they gathered at Forest Lawn, just steps from where their laughter once filled the air now replaced by the heavy silence of goodbye. The initial absence of illicit substances only added a poignant note to the tragedy of his loss. Perry's passing leaves a legacy that mournfully eclipses his time as a beloved television icon. Let's start from the beginning. Before we continue, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, it's our motivation. You can't tell, but I'm trying to break the tension by mooning you guys. <laughs> Perry, who passed away at the age of 54 after being discovered dead in his Los Angeles home's hot tub, has had a quiet and private funeral. The actor was laid to rest during a straightforward one-hour ceremony at Forest Lawn Cemetery in Los Angeles. Jennifer Aniston, age 54, Lisa Kudrow, age 60, Courtney Cox, age 59, and David Schwimmer, age 57, arrived together as a group of four. They were all dressed in black suits and appeared solemn as they got ready to bid their final farewells to Perry, a bystander informed DailyMail.com, stating, Ms. Aniston was among the earliest arrivals. She maintained a low profile. It's a notable gathering. Matthew Perry's emotional mother, Suzanne Morrison, aged 84, and his stepfather, Keith Morrison, a journalist for Dateline, aged 76, attended the intimate gathering, along with his father, John Perry, aged 82. Keith Morrison also served as one of the pallbearers. The cemetery is situated across from Warner Bros. Studios, where Friends was filmed over 10 seasons. It serves as the ultimate resting place for numerous Hollywood luminaries, including Carrie Fisher, Bette Davis, Stan Laurel, Buster Keaton, Michael Hutchins from INXS, Paul Walker, Brittany Murphy, and Anne Heshey. The ceremony concluded with a performance of the Peter Gabriel song Don't Give Up, which features the lyrics, No strength left, or so it appears. I am an individual whose aspirations have all abandoned. I've altered my appearance. I've altered my identity. But nobody desires you when you experience defeat. We were wanted all along. A witness informed DailyMail.com, saying, There wasn't a person without tears. Emotions ran high with both tears and moments of laughter. Only those who were very close to Matthew, as well as family members, addressed the gathering. Following the ceremony, Perry was laid to rest in a family-exclusive gathering with a dark wooden casket. Outside the church, a group of mourners dressed in black gathered. Some were observed hugging and consoling each other, many of them wearing dark sunglasses to shield their eyes from the intense Californian sun. It remains uncertain whether Perry personally selected the church for his farewell or if it was chosen by his family. Additionally, there is no information available about the possibility of a more public commemoration of his life being planned for a later date. On Monday, Jennifer Aniston and the other cast members, including Courtney Cox, Matt LeBlanc, David Schwimmer, and Lisa Kudrow, released a statement expressing their deep surprise and sorrow. In a collective statement issued on Monday, the cast conveyed their profound devastation over Matthew's passing, emphasizing that they were not merely colleagues but a close-knit family. There are many words we could express, but at this moment, we need time to mourn and come to terms with this unimaginable loss. We will share more in due course when we are ready and able to do so. At this time, our thoughts and love are directed towards Maddie's family, his friends, and all those who cherished him worldwide. The exact cause of Perry's death is still not officially determined. But the preliminary toxicology reports indicated the absence of methamphetamine or fentanyl in his system at the time of his drowning. During his lifetime, Perry had been candid about his battles with substance abuse and alcohol. According to a TMZ report, the usual drugs were not detected in Perry's initial test results. However, more comprehensive testing is currently in progress to determine if the beloved actor had any prescription medications in his system. When investigators arrived at Perry's residence, they did not discover any illicit substances, but they did find prescription medication that was appropriately labeled and stored in prescription containers. In his memoir, Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing, published in 2022, 
Perry recounted that following his colon rupture in 2018, he received a prescription for opioids that he felt were inadequate for managing his pain. As a result, he resorted to obtaining potentially fentanyl-contaminated OxyContin from street sources. The illicit pills cost around $75 each, so I was providing the individual with $3,000 on numerous occasions throughout the week, he explained in his memoir. Following an initial inquiry, the Los Angeles County coroner has postponed providing an official cause of death, and it may take several weeks to establish. Individuals who were acquainted with him assert that Perry was drug-free and abstaining from alcohol at the time of his passing. In the opening of his best-selling memoir, Perry wrote, Hello, I'm Matthew, although you might recognize me by a different name. My friends refer to me as Maddie, and I should not be alive. Perry's book reached the top spot on Amazon's rankings on Sunday, displacing Britney Spears' memoir from the number one position. While he was working on the popular sitcom Friends in the 1990s, Perry's battle with addiction and his strong drive to entertain audiences often went unnoticed by many. In my memoir, I wrote that Friends was immensely successful, and I couldn't afford to put that at risk. I had a deep affection for the script, my fellow cast members, and everything related to the show. However, I was contending with my substance abuse issues, which only intensified my feelings of guilt, he explained. I had a secret and no one could know. I had this feeling that I might not survive if the live audience didn't respond with laughter and that was definitely not a healthy mindset. There were moments when I would deliver a line and if the audience didn't laugh, I would become extremely anxious and, at times, even experience physical distress, he expressed. Perry explained in his writing, when I didn't receive the expected laughter, it would deeply unsettle me. I experienced this pressure consistently and it took a toll on my well-being. I was also aware that among the six individuals involved in the show, only one of them was struggling with personal issues. In his memoir, Perry remembered that his co-star Jennifer Aniston had a conversation with him about being under the influence during filming. He recalled her saying to him, I'm aware that you're consuming alcohol. She mentioned in what Perry described as an unusual yet caring manner, we can detect it, and the use of the word we had a profound impact on him. A fellow participant in Perry's recovery program revealed to DailyMail.com in an exclusive interview on Tuesday, Matthew wasn't consuming alcohol. He played a significant role in our Alcoholics Anonymous community. He regularly attended meetings, shared his experiences at meetings, and was actively assisting several newcomers. He had a mentor and was also mentoring others. It appeared that he was on a positive path, the source added. The source mentioned that the actor had been dedicated to supporting individuals struggling with addiction and had recently shown an interest in sharing his own journey through public speaking engagements. Maddie expressed his desire to visit universities and discuss alcoholism. That was his talent. He had a remarkable ability to communicate effectively and inspire people, the source further explained. It held great significance for him to connect with the younger generation and share his don't give up message. He truly embodied those words in his life, the source emphasized. He had a knack for bringing laughter to people, even during recovery meetings. Additionally, he had a spiritual side not tied to any particular religion but a deeper sense of spirituality. He practiced what he preached and believed that his purpose was to assist others and instill hope in them, the source explained. Maddie will always serve as the embodiment of hope because he persevered relentlessly. He transformed his life and provided invaluable support to numerous individuals in the program, far beyond what he could have envisioned, the source reflected. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for your time. See you soon.